and welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Jess Fertig. I'm your host today. Uh, and we are hosting an interview with Highfield Resources. The ASX ticker code is HFR. And joining me is the CEO, Ignacio Salazar. Hi, Ignacio. It's great to have you on the Hi, show. Hi, Jess. Yeah, nice to be here. Thanks. Now, Ignacio, um, the company's recently announced a very strategic financial arrangement. But before we delve into that, I thought it might be worthwhile just giving our small caps audience a brief overview of the company and your projects as a start. Okay, no, very good, very good. So we are ASX listed, as you said, um, a project in Spain, shower ready, as we like to say. A lot of effort to get to the permitting, all the permitting done that was behind us. Uh, a few months ago, and we've been concentrating on the financing. That financing in place, we were after a strategic deal, and with obviously with the um, permitting and the financing and the preparation for construction in place, just uh, about to start the construction of MUGA. So very, very keen to to move on uh, with the, the this deal and then uh, start to build a, a project. Potas project MOP in Europe, the strongest point is the location in the middle of the Potas market. And that is what makes this project very special, an area in Europe that is in deficit of Potas, no, and very much uh, well expecting and hopefully a project like this, which is the next one that will, will happen in Europe. Okay, very interesting. Now, moving back to that strategic financial arrangement that we were just covering now. Can you sort of elaborate for our audience on the strategic rationale behind this partnership um, with uh, Yangquang Energy Group? I hope I've pronounced it correctly. Yeah. And and why you announced yeah. pre-binding deal? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> indeed. So very, very important for us. We've been going through this strategic process. And, and in fact, the process is at a lot of angles in terms of synergies and uh, support to the project. The main thing in this will be the, the full solution for the funding of MUGA. So with this deal, it's not only Jankwan, but other investors that are taking place and we will, will be named as we move forward into definitive agreements. And they will provide the 220 million US dollars that we need to fund MUGA. So this, as I said, this I mean, sometimes people refer to strategic simply putting money in a project. This is a lot more. Jiangquan is the company behind the setup of Jiangco Australia. So, so especially in the Australian markets, they will be aware of that. Very successful venture that generated a lot of value for shareholders going forward. So hopefully we can replicate quite a lot of that. But also at the same time, this project is going to put Haifil in a, in a completely different platform because also Jiangquan owns a project in Canada, and that project is moving into Highfield as part of the transaction. So what we see the company now, uh, the team developing, uh, building, in fact, MUGA, and becoming stronger as we do that, and as a subsequent step, develop Saudi, the project in Canada, with with obviously a bigger project in a, in a jurisdiction that is top uh, quality in, in terms of resources in globally. No? Canada is obviously first producer of MOP globally. So for many angles, as, as well as the, obviously the possibility to support uh, capital injections into the company going forward with these new shareholders, other synergies in terms of um, um, well, the experience that Jiangquan and the other shareholders provide to the venture, I think very, very strategic deal and a lot. It is a transformational deal we like to say about this, and I think we don't exaggerate when we say that. Fantastic. Thanks, Ignacio. Now, shifting gears a little bit, can you provide a little bit more detail for our audience around the due diligence process for the Saudi Vendon um, and what specific uh, criteria are being assessed? Yeah. So did it, um, and maybe I, uh, by the way, uh, you, you had that sort of second question before about the non-binding. We felt it was so important, and, and nevertheless, I mean, in terms of commercial terms, so advanced that it was very material for the company, so worthwhile putting in the market. Mind you, that also Jiangquan Energy have to make their own 
uh, pre-release and announcements in their markets in Hong Kong and Shanghai. So from all sides, uh, everybody very committed to see this project going forward. Due diligence, of course, we um, we saw, I mean, it's a lot of due diligence. The due diligence, if you wish more, the strategic rationale for us becomes very apparent. It's no doubt in my mind, win-win proposition. So there is a lot of value in MUGA that needs to be unlocked as soon as the financing is in place. So we know the extraordinary economics of the project. And obviously, we need to build it to realize that value, as well as Saudi. Saudi is a project that has been there and also, uh, I think, needs the proper team to make it happen. Obviously, a lot more intensive from a capital perspective. So you want to make sure you do things right. No? Adding to, obviously, Chinese investors that provide, in the case of Saudi, the market is more uh, the key element that will provide some access to the markets, as well as well the combination of the assets. And this, um, as I said, is it, it is a very important uh, for all all the state all, all the partners that we will be ending up in the new high field. The due diligence, of course, we've we've been to Saudi, we've visited Saudi, we analyze and follow well the example of Young Call Australia, as I said, might be a good one to understand because it's that could give us some hints about the future for high field in terms of uh, possibilities to add and uh, value and be accretive to our current shareholders as well. So we've gone through obviously all the technical as as as, as well as Young One has been putting a lot of due diligence on our side. So it's, we are used to a lot of uh, due diligence. We did it with the project finance, and uh, and okay, this has been thoroughly analyzed. There will be in any case. There is uh, such a big deal for Highfield that this will be subject to shareholder approval and will be an independent uh, expert report to, to review this. So it's, it's a deal very well checked and reviewed by, by from all angles. Yes, no, absolutely. And Ignacio, sort of staying on the train with the due diligence, have there been any sort of potential um, challenges or risks associated with the proposed transaction that you that you think might be or that you've come across? And, and how is Highfield sort of preparing to mitigate those? Okay, so I mean the main uh, the main element, obviously, the key elements are the MUGA becomes fully funded, so it is a major risk for the company. I think the and, and that was Jan Kwan's point of view that I happen to share very well. The fact that we work on the experience of the current team that has got MUGA to the point where we are and will only become bigger uh, and stronger as we move into construction of MUGA will the risk significantly Saudi. I mean, in the case of, I think MUGA is very well understood asset in for, for us, obviously. Saudi key element resource, extremely high quality, main project, uh, main main. Not, not risk, but challenging projects in Canada is markets, and as I said, with the level, and obviously the capital request. But those two elements, almost by definition, with the current setup and the new set of shareholders, is what we believe they are very well addressed, uh, not only mitigated, but addressed. And that will put the... I think we will have to start to think about how feel in a different way, not as a junior mining company, will become more of a global potash player, and uh, I think with the with the setup that we have as a result of this deal, we are very well prepared to manage uh, the deals and make a, a big success of the company going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And Ignacio, you mentioned capital. Um, now, how will the, the US 200 million cornerstone placement that you've just got sort of be allocated across the various phases of the Melga project? Uh, and, and what are the sort of expected timelines um, for those. So, so that is very well understood from the beginning between between Jan Kwan and ourselves and the other parties. First thing we need to do is to do, to build Muga, which is ready to go, and therefore uh, that uh, that money really is to fund the development of well the building of phase one is the half a million tons of uh, potash production from uh, from Muga. I mean, there will be a second phase, hopefully, uh, to do. Pretty soon after, but once we are in, a, there is extra potential to double that production. But all this money 
adding to the project finance loan of 320 million that we already had secured a few months ago will be to, uh, and, and that will sort of complete the funding of phase one MUGA half a million tons uh, here. I mean, in parallel, um, or as we are uh, getting to the end of the construction of MUGA, the development Southie, and then it will be, I mean, not only the building of Southie, but also other, as I said, phase two MUGA, and other potential exploration assets that we have around. No? But very much the allocation is clearly uh, very well identified from the beginning for phase one MUGA. Yeah, fantastic. Now, these are massive milestones that the company is looking to achieve. Um, and I'm just wondering for our small caps audience, how do you think um, the global potash market trends and current pricing are sort of influencing high fields, sort of just, you know, strategic decision making with all of these yeah. transactions? Well, absolutely. I mean, very much. I mean, high field, and, and maybe I should make a bit of a distinction now with this deal between the old high field, the new high field, uh, very, the old high field, uh, which is just MUA, very much the very clear strategy. I mean, targeting European market mainly with obviously a big deficit, half of the demand uh, supplied by imports, most of them from Russia and Belarus, are number two, three global producers with all the your political considerations around that. So very, very important um, strategic uh, fit. No? Now that we move uh, into this new well, uh, company, if I may call it like that, I think it becomes a global player. In POTAS, I think probably, um, well, uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know, not not maybe by initial design, but uh, very, very, a lot more stronger proposition when you are dealing these are big projects in general you are dealing with a um, uh, few companies i mean this deal has the potential to put us uh, once we are obviously in, in full uh, production at the levels of k plus s or um, icl so extremely extremely new sort of setup for us and uh, and i think that that will allow us to compete at a global level it's not just uh, europe for us anymore no and as i said with the the elements that uh, the deal bring into the table, I think that put us in a position to compete in a very strong way uh, in the future. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ignacio. Now, I have one final question for you. And you have mentioned, you know, the strategic positioning that Highfield is sort of finding itself in the global market, particularly in um, in light of um, the potash trends at the moment. Um, but can you provide for our audience sort of two to three key investment takeaways as to why they should have Highfield on their uh, you know, stock watch list. Yeah, well, I think um, very much, and, and it's all about timing, no? when you are an investor, and, and it's about, and typically you want to move from a lower to a higher position, no? because when you are, um, when, when you are an investor in a company, and I think in our case, we've gone through a very long process, no? well, typical of mining companies, in our case, successful in the sense that permitting financing is getting there. And we are not only getting to um, get um, MUGA funded and with the support, I mean, adding to the register extremely strong support from a capital perspective, but adding this other asset. No? And uh, any company, when I look at um, any project, uh, I think, you need three ingredients, which is uh, assets, team, and capital. And I think we will tick the boxes extremely strong uh, from the assets perspective. I discussed that, the comp how complementary they are on, on high quality assets, both MUA and Saudi. The team, I explained, uh, tested and, and proven so far and only becoming more uh, develop and stronger as we go forward, ready to embark on Saudi after MUGA and the capital I, I, I cover as well. So we will be with this deal positioning the company in a very strong footing in the market and something that I, I dare to say probably was beyond our expectations you know, when we've been working for the last few years to get uh, MUGA uh, built and, and in operation. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Ignacio. And thank you so much for your time um, today. I'm sure our, our, our audience gained a lot from this discussion. Um, and all the best with your proposed transaction and with, the, with your MUBA project. And really looking forward to having you back to chat with us again on the show very soon. Yeah, we keep moving as fast as we can. And, and thanks for your time. That, that was my pleasure. Thanks, Harold.